So, in yesterday's chapter, we got a lot of information as regarding the Poneglyphs, those mysterious stones that, as of lately, we've been getting more and more info about. But yesterday, we got the alma mater of information regarding the Poneglyphs. We got their... <coughs> Sorry, we got their total number, and we got some more specification as for the divisions. Now, I will talk a little bit about the Poneglyphs first, and then I'm going to connect them with the Yonkos. I know, it seems strange, but just wait until that point. So, Baron Tamago said that there are approximately 30 Poneglyphs in the world, which is... A little bit less than I was expecting, but still, it is a good number, and I support that number all day long. Out of those, out of those thirty, four are the road poneglyphs, the red poneglyphs that together indicate the way to the last island left out. I'll be coming back to those in a little bit. Then nine of those, when together, make up the Rio poneglyph, the thread that tells the true history of the world. Now, I always thought that all Poneglyphs would make up the Rio Poneglyph, but apparently it is not so. And I came up with a fourth category for the Poneglyphs that, because we've seen so far two Poneglyphs that detail information on the location of the ancient weapons. Alabaster, uh, the Poneglyph on Alabaster beneath the King's Tomb told the location of the ancient weapon Pluton, and the one in Skypea told the location of the ancient weapon Poseidon, which was Fisherman Island. Now, I believe we will see one day, maybe, one of the Poneglyphs in Big Mom's possession is actually the third Poneglyph that tells the indication of an ancient weapon, Uranus, or Uranus, yes, I'm going to say Uranus, I'm not going to say the other way. Um, so, I believe that three Poneglyphs that contain information about the location of ancient weapons, so it's kind of a fourth category. As for the remaining 14, they are actually just miscellaneous information. For instance, the Poneglyph in Fishman Island, which details the apologizing letter from Joy. Boy, I believe that that's an information Poneglyph. Just sort of a random poneglyph that contains a random bit of history about the person who made it or about another story in its entirety. We don't know much about the contents of poneglyphs because Robin never tells us about them. Never mind, they're just an important part of the story. You don't you don't need to tell us really no no just just keep just keep keep the information for yourself or the you know just I don't care. Anyway I believe that the three ancient weapons poneglyphs can be part of the information poneglyphs. They don't necessarily have to be a group in and on itself. I understand if that is not the case, but I just decided to divide them as it is. Now, the information and ancient weapons poneglyphs, they are pretty straightforward. So, not much is to be said about them. I, now that I said it out loud, I actually believe that the Poneglyph that Jim Bay got to Big Mom, that the one he got in his cover story, could actually be the one that details the location of the of Uranus. That would be really, really cool. Imagine that. Now, as for the Rio Poneglyph, we gotta ask ourselves, has a Rio Poneglyph appeared already? Has a poneglyph that's part of the Rio poneglyph appeared already? I dare say, that because Robin knows of the Rio poneglyph, she knows about the connection between the poneglyphs. She may not know that there are nine, but she knows that there is a sort of a thread that together makes up this, the history of the world. So, when could she have learned about that? Well, to you, my dear viewers, I say the poneglyph she found when she was little. We know that when she was little and before she went working with Crocodile, way before she went working with Crocodile, she found a poneglyph in an unknown location of unknown contents, as all of them are, sort of. We know the general gist of it, but we readers do know, but the remaining of the cast doesn't. So that poneglyph so far is the only one that remains with contents unknown. We know that the Alabasta one was 
was Pluton's location. The one in Skypia was Poseidon's location. The one in Fishman Island was Joe Boy's was Joe Boy's apologizing letter. Then we have the road Poneglyph in Zo. And we have now two Poneglyphs in in Big Man, Big Man Island and another road Poneglyph. So so far, seven Poneglyphs. If you don't count one in in Skypia that was written in Poneglyph Legend but was not referred as a Poneglyph, so it's up to debate. So that could make eight, really. So eight Poneglyphs so far out of the 30. It's not that that much, but I don't think we'll ever know the, the, the full set of Poneglyphs. Because 14 information Poneglyphs is a lot. And I don't think... I think they will focus on the road Poneglyphs and the real Poneglyphs and the Poneglyphs regarding the ancient weapons. Now, I've spoken about the, the Poneglyphs in general. This is not going to be a very long theory, by the way. So, I've spoken a little bit about the Rio Poneglyph, how I think that maybe out of the two Poneglyphs that Big Mom has, one is the location of Uranus and the other is a Rio Poneglyph. So, I hope that to be the case. But now, let's talk about the road Poneglyphs. We know that the road Poneglyphs are Poneglyphs that went together they show the location, they pinpoint the exact location for the island left out. Now, nowadays, one of such red pony glyphs is still in Zo, as it ever was, and the other three, one is with Big Mom, as we've seen, the other one which is, is with Kaido, and the third one is missing. Now, why do I include the Yonkos in this video, you're asking? Well, the reasoning is very simple. The Poneglyphs were all, I expect, created right after the Void Century. So, I expect the Road Poneglyphs to have been created somewhere along that same time. So, I think that when those were created, one of them was automatically handed to Zo. As we've seen, Zo has a Red Poneglyph ever since. So, that one was sent to Zo as a matter of safekeeping, and that the other three were given to the four most, um, how should I say, powerful and not just powerful in terms of power, but the most influential members of the ancient kingdom. But hey, you said they were given to the four members, but there's only three Poneglyphs left. That, my dear viewers, is what I'm going to explain now. So... I believe that the Yonko system has its roots right after the Void Century. Not necessarily as the Yonko system we know of today, but with one with a very different purpose. I believe that three are, are of the, those four influential members of, this, of the ancient kingdom, Three of them were given the remaining road Poneglyphs, each one for safekeeping, and they settled on an island on the New World, thus making it their territory. So that's how I think that the Yonko system started. Three members of the ancient kingdom, unknown to the rest of the world, settled in an island in the New World and claimed it as their own. Probably not as a pirate claims an island with a flag, but maybe just they just got there. Maybe they even created a community there and made their island that island their own. And then, what about the Fort Yonko? Well, my dear fellows, I believe that the Fort Yonko is the man that rules the, the other three Yonkos. He's the man that has the potential to know the real history and to make something use of it. That's right. Who's the only person that we know of, well, the only two persons that we know of that ever knew the whole story and they had the potential to do something and sit on the throne, one of which actually did. That's right. I'm speaking about Pirate King Goldie Roger and Whitebeard Edward Newgate. Now, let's make sense of this. I think that the Fort Yonko was actually the guy that controlled, not controlled, but he oversaw the, Yon the other Yonko's activities. And he was tasked 
with protecting the real history because time was not right for the real history to come to the surface. Time was not right to make any sort of arrangements for the plan that the ancient kingdoms have. So the Fort Yonko was the guy that knew all of that and he was tasked with protecting it. And who I think it was the first iteration of the Pirate King was none other than the king of the ancient kingdom himself, Joy Boy. I know, it's a very crazy theory. But basically what I'm saying, Joy Boy and three other members of the, of the ancient kingdom were the first pirate king and the first Yonkos all together. Because I believe that the Yonko system is nothing new of this generation. Kaido, Whitebeard, Big Mom and Chanks were not the first Yonkos. I believe that before them, Roger, Whitebeard, Shiki and somebody else, maybe even Kaido or Big Mom, one of them, they were Yonkos already. Shanks took over Roger's position. Um, Kaido might have taken over Shiki's position. And maybe Big Mom was already a Yonko back then. But now you might be asked, you might be asking yourselves, then if the Yonkos were tasked with protecting the road pony lifts, why don't they still do it? As a matter of fact, they might still do, although they don't realize it as their task. Now, let's imagine that the first four Yonkos were actually Joy Boy and three other members of the Ancient Kingdom. They were tasked with protecting the road polyglyphs, and they did. The generation after them did the same thing, and so forth, so on, until a certain generation, when there may be one of their descendants or all their descendants broke the path. They became pirates probably or the islands where they were in were, to, were taken over by pirates and thus the original purpose of the Yonko system was lost and thus the new one was created. Because although I speak of the creation of the Yonko system, the Yonko system is not really a a system in and of itself. It's just a denomination for the four strongest pirates in the New World. But if we think about it, they are actually protecting the Poneglyphs in their own way. Apart from the Poneglyphs that's, that's in Zoe, because that one is never going to, to be gotten, the Poneglyph with Big Mom and Kaido, unknown to them, they are actually protecting it. Because as Baron Tamago said in yesterday's chapter, Yonkos would battle among themselves to get a Poneglyph. And I don't know about you, but I think that the Yonkos have similar levels of strength, so battling two Yonkos against one another would be a waste of time for each side. So, in this stalemate that they are currently, they are actually protecting the Poneglyphs from themselves, but they are protecting them. As for the third, I believe that the only one who knew, and now the only ones who ever knew the location of that of that pony leaf, and the one that does know currently, were again Roger and Whitebeard, and now Shanks knows the location of the pony leaf. In fact, I believe that the island where that pony leaf is is either the main territory of Shanks or one of Chang's territories. He, if Chang's even has territories, I really don't know if he has. Um, so, yes, I believe that Chang's is the only one that stays true to the original purpose of the Yonkos, even if he himself doesn't know it. He maybe, he maybe does it because his captain did it. And then, as an honor to his captain, he's doing the same thing. So, there you have it, guys. This was my theory. I have been cooking this theory for a very long time, just regarding the, the Yonko system and their purpose of protecting the road pony lifts, but I could never came across this idea of, of Joy Boy and the others. I was, I'm going to tell you how it came to me. Yesterday I was doing the dishes, as I always do, and I was speaking to myself. Yes, I do speak to myself about these things. My bird must think I'm crazy. 
by the way, I have a little burden. Poor thing, you must think I'm crazy. I am, I am, I am. My channel is not called Man Manga for, for no reason. And I was like, okay, so if the Yonko system was created after the, the Void Century, who could the first four Yonko be? And then it came to me. Guys from the Ancient Kingdom. But hey, if there's only three road poneglyphs left, then why there's four Yonko? Well, that makes sense. The fourth Yonko could be the guy that has the potential to rule them all and stand above an emperor. And then it hit me. Joy Boy fits perfectly. I know this is probably never gonna be confirmed. This is probably all wrong, but hey, it's a theory. My theory, I wanna know. What do you guys think about this theory? Do you think it's a very smoked out theory? I bet you it is. It was a very short theory, I know, I know. I never planned to do it very long because I, I don't have any information to back it up. I mean, we know barely nothing about Joy Boy. I don't even know if Joy Boy is the king of the ancient kingdom. I think it is. I think everyone knows, everyone thinks that he is the king of the ancient kingdom. So, and that's how I think it will close up. Joy Boy being the king of the original kingdom was the guy that knew how what to do. And Luffy, some people think that Luffy is his descendant. So Joy Boy could have been the original Monkey D member. Uh, but that's a theory for another time. And then Luffy, being a descendant of Joy Boy, will be the, the one to fulfill his plans. Some pretty mad stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Sorry for the shorter video, but... I know, I, oh, not all videos can be half an hour. I, I think you guys appreciate a shorter video from, from now and then. Um, I'm going to edit these videos out. I have to go out in a few hours. I'm going to watch Fantastic Bits and where to find them. Yes. I'll have a chance to go back to the Harry Potter universe. I am so, so excited. I know this is not a channel to speak about those things, but hey, it's my channel. Let me go what I want. Anyway. Um, I'm not going to make a review for the movie, don't worry. I'm just telling you guys that I'm going to watch the movie. If you guys have watched the movie as well, please tell me what you think about the movie in the comment section below as well. What do you think about this theory? Am I completely bananas on the noggin? Do I have any point of reason in the midst of all of this? Please do tell me. Share your opinions with me in the comment section down below. As I always say, the comment section down below is yours to use and abuse. And I will see you guys next week for a new fresh batch of chapters. I bid you all a very good weekend. Bye-bye.